Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you into the presence of the Lord and to fellowship with one another. We have a great Sunday this morning with our focus on the prodigal son and with our Bible class activities and Sunday school opportunities to learn, to grow, to be strengthened in the saving faith with Jesus. So we pray God's blessing upon all of us for that. And we look ahead to this week also. We'll have our midweek Lenten services again on Wednesday in the morning and in the evening. And this is the last Sunday to get in an order for Easter lilies, which is just three weeks from today, Easter Sunday. And you also are invited to find your place with the Easter festival that's going to be the week before. That's just less than two weeks away now that we'll be hosting. You can talk to Carl to see how to be involved in that, or you can just show up and enjoy the day. Anything else that we need to mention? Betsy. Uh, next Sunday, one week from today, at 3 o'clock at Hope Presbyterian, the Concordia Choirs will be presenting their spring concert. And you're all invited to come. It's at 3 o'clock? 3 o'clock. Next Sunday. Yes. Thank you. Carl? Next Saturday, one week from today, minus one. We are having a work day here at the church to get the grounds ready for the Easter Festival. So we'll be doing cleanup on the trail. Thank you. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another.
questions we can offer up this morning? Pam. Sister and brother-in-law over in the hill country of in danger of fire yesterday. Lord preserve their home. We ask God to send rain on that part of the country to water the earth and forestall any further damage. Terry. Jerry's mom in the hospital in Fredericksburg. We ask God to minister to her and provide healing as he wills it. And give a comfort and strength to the family. Alice. Ed. God give him recovery from his fall and banish the pain and restore good health soon. Do you tell them if it ha keeps happening on Sunday morning, we're going to start getting suspicious? <laughs> oh, yes, Selena. My cousin Ari, her cast is getting fully set on Tuesday. Little cousin with the broken arm getting more medical treatment this week. Ask God to go with her into that and give good care and provide a full recovery, so full use of her arm again, and uh, patience to the rest of the family. Ginger. So we had tacos and prayer, prayers yesterday, and great uh, partnership with our Hispanic brothers and sisters as well, and one of the men who came, Sam, his grandson, has been kidnapped for a year. They still haven't been able to locate him. We ask God to intervene in that, to do as he wills for the reconciliation of that family and the return of the little grandson. These things we offer up to the Lord through our Savior Jesus Christ, and we will sing with that in mind the first hymn, Christ Sits at God's Right Hand. <laughs>
we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have good news for you. By virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intro today is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wash me completely of my guilt. Because I know my wrongdoings. I have sinned against you, you alone. I have committed evil in your sight. Yes, I was born in guilt and sin. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. To the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, 
and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. You will say on that day, I thank you, Lord, though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. God is indeed my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. Yea, the Lord is my strength and my shield. He has become my salvation. You will draw water with joy from the springs of salvation. And you will say on that day, thank the Lord, call on God's name, proclaim God's deed among the peoples, declare that God's name is exalted. Sing to the Lord who has done glorious things. Proclaim this throughout all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, city of Zion, because the Holy One of Israel is great among you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 5. So then, from this point on, we will not recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards, that is not how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. All of these new things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and who gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ by not counting people's sins against them. He has trusted us with this message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors of who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. God caused the one who did not know sin to be sin for our sake, so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord.
We stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told them this parable. A certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. Then the father divided his estate between them. Soon afterward, the younger son gathered everything together and took a trip to a land far away. There he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up his resources, a severe food shortage arose in that country, and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I am starving to death. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran to him, hugged him, and kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fattened calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasting because the son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. Coming in from the field, he approached the house and heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, Your brother has arrived, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received his son back safe and sound. Then the older son was furious and did not want to enter in but his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, Look, I have served you all these years, and I never disobeyed your instruction. Yet you have never given me as much as a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returned, after gobbling up your estate on prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Then his father said, Son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess the saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We sing the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The parable of the prodigal son. It is such a familiar story and with good reason. It resonates across time and place through every country and culture. It is vivid and memorable and true. It is reflective for all people. Every one of us can see ourselves in the various characters and situations. The father, the son, the younger son, the older brother. It captures the distinctive essence of God's saving work. What was lost is finally found. What was dead is ultimately made alive. And it is a perfect response from Jesus to the Pharisees' complaint. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Christ intends to show them that that is the exact purpose of his mission. This is what he came to do, to reclaim sinners for God and to bring us into full and permanent fellowship with himself. The traditional title, the prodigal son, is a reference to his wastefulness, to be prodigal with his inheritance. Some modern versions of the Bible have updated the heading to the lost son which corresponds in Luke chapter 15 with the lost sheep and the lost coin, two other parables. Others have suggested that the best title is The Forgiving Father. I guess you could also highlight it as The Envious Brother. You can surely find your place in each of these characterizations at one time or another rebellion resentment repentance restoration rejoicing giving and taking offense offering and receiving forgiveness A deeper interpretation sees the relationship between father and son as that of God the Father and God the Son. This says that Jesus takes our place as the lost son. He suffers the indignity of the cross for us, being separated from his father as he fully identifies himself with our sinfulness. He actually experiences degradation and death in our place, cut off from his proper inheritance. And then in the resurrection, God takes back his beloved son and he is restored to everlasting life and his proper status as Lord. All of heaven rejoices at Jesus' return And we are invited to join the celebration and share in everything the Father has. Millions of words have been written and spoken on this one ancient story. Filled with such depth and meaning and significance. So I thought today we would take a different approach and let pictures tell the story. Here too there is an endless array. After depictions of Jesus' suffering and death, this might be the most popular subject in art. Let's take a look at a few that could stimulate us to greater spiritual awareness. This first one was by Luca Giordano, 
And there are actually are not too many works that depict this opening scene. This one has the younger son as confident and full of himself, knowing that he should be given what he demands. The father is agreeable, seemingly knowing that any argument won't be heard at this time. The son is closed off to that. But then look at the servants. It's like they're almost filled with dread, hardly able to believe what's happening. They're horrified by the young son's audacious request. What if we had such revulsion and horror at the first outbreak of our sin? Of course, one thing leads to another when we give in to temptation, and the next scene is graphic. The young son in a faraway land, wild living is in view here, an inheritance squandered. You can tell by the style of the art that it didn't last long. There's nothing of permanence here several crazy nights strung together and the savings of a lifetime are gone. And the devilish attraction doesn't produce anything of value. So next stop, the pigsty. At first glance, the sun here almost looks like a prosperous hog farmer. Maybe he's still trying to keep up appearances. We know about that. Even as you're on the edge of losing it all, you still want to project a successful image. We try to cover up the depth of our depravity. But as you look more closely, you notice that the sun is surely recalling How good he had it back at home. That's a distant land, though, and a return is not in view. He is stuck with the swine. And that leads to despair. This is a contemporary artist. The next slide, Liz Swindle powerful image. You can feel this one as if in a dungeon or in prison, trapped, hopeless, no way out, everything wasted, everything gone, nothing to do but die. Have you ever been there? stuck in a mess of your own making? Then we go on to this one. This is by Thomas Hart Benton. He's a noted American landscape artist. Had no idea that he'd ever done a religious theme. Here he gives a different feel to the sun's situation. It's nothing but wreckage. And the reality of death is unavoidable. This is a necessary position in order for the Lord to do his saving work. We all have to come to the recognition that on our own we have nothing to offer, nothing to cling to. Our presumptions of success and self-sufficiency and independence are exposed as illusions. Confessing our waywardness, admitting our guilt, acknowledging the errors of our ways, we can only approach the Lord empty-handed. 
So then next, the son throws himself on his father's mercy. He knows he has no claim on anything else. If he could only be a slave in his father's house, he would take it. He has here no reason to presume on grace. He has no reason to imagine reconciliation. He is just desperate for a reprieve. Something better than nothing. But then we see this father has been watching the horizon from the day his son left. He has not disowned his son. He has not turned his back and moved on. He has not wished his beloved's destruction. This father is unlike any other. The very ideal of fatherhood. The divine image. And his compassion, as we'll see here, is boundless. His kindness is unsurpassable. His forgiveness is total. His acceptance is always available. His desire is to be reunited with those he always loved. And that provides for a joyous scene. Reconciliation is accomplished. Even Fido is one happy pup. This is the way things should be. That takes us into this picture, Pompeo Botoni. God envelops us, and we are home. Interesting there in the father's embrace, it looks like there's a lot more room for others to be enveloped. Some more depictions of this. If that's your style there, the curious cow. And another one. Impressionistic, tight embrace. They will not be separated this time. Next one. And again. See the soles of the sun's feet. Hasn't received the sandals yet, but his father is going to put those back on him. And the next one? Pretty out there, isn't it? That is the parable of the forgiving father. The all-seeing eye. And another? If you're a Cubist fan, can you make it out there? Unhinge your eyes, unfocus. There's the father at the top. Son in his hands there. And another. Very simple, but it conveys a lot, kind of like the cover of the bulletin. Just a few lines, but you feel how they have been returned to each other. And then this one, the famous painting by Rembrandt. The Father's deepest desire and fervent prayer 
has been fulfilled. And then we come to the conclusion of the story. Here's the restoration. The feasting has begun. Everyone's participating in it. No holds barred, no expense spared. The beloved son has returned. And then finally, I call this one, strike up the band. It is time to party because what was dead is now alive. What was lost has been found. So we also have reason to celebrate. For Jesus' sake, the Lord brings us back to himself now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We stand and sing the offertory. be seated. We take time to bring our offerings to the Lord to reflect on the abundance of his gifts and as we do that we'll hear the piano offertory.
We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. We stand for the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For contrition over our sin and joy and confession and absolution, that God would give us a proper knowledge of the evil we have done and deal with us according to his steadfast love, let us pray to the Lord. For confidence in Christ alone, that God our Father would call us to repentance whenever we wander into sin or believe we've earned a place in his household by our works, and that he would return us to the certainty that we are found alive in his Son, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For pastors, teachers, musicians, and all church workers, that God would bless their daily labors to make known his deeds among the peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For hearts ever grateful that in holy baptism the Lord washes us thoroughly from our guilt and cleanses us from our sin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our nation and all in authority, that God would make them prudent and wise so that we might live in peace and freely make known his message of reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of mercy, healing, and help, that the Lord would deliver them according to his will and remind them of the day when sorrow and sickness will be no more, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who partake of Holy Communion today, that they may come prepared in faith to receive the body and blood of the Holy One that dwells in our midst, let us pray to the Lord. That the people of God in their various callings would rejoice to make known his deeds in all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. We continue with the preface to the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this 
you remember me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. Yeah, the body of Christ given for you. Mary, the body of Christ given for you. Depart in peace. Amen. true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, dead and now alive in Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Evelyn, the body of Christ given for you. Garrett, the body of Christ given for you. Carl, the body of Christ given for you. Diane, the body of Christ given for you. take drink the blood of Jesus shed for the remission of your sins. May this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. We part in peace, dead and now alive in Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the 
Welcome to the Lord's table. Roma, the body of Christ given for you. Margie, the body of Christ given for you. Bill, the body of Christ given for you. Pam, the body of Christ given for you. Brother, the body of Christ given for you. Caleb, the body of Christ given for you. Joe, the body of Christ given for you. Elmo, the body of Christ given for you. Francis, the body of Christ given for you. true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, dead and now alive in Jesus. Amen.
we stand and give thanks. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.